Tana Morgana. I think it's Japanese. I don't know what to expect. I swear I can't believe somebody actually paid me to stop. Is it that bad of a game? No, I had auto skip off. I literally had auto skip off. Oh, this is a Japanese visual novel. Oh, this might be worse. 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 Can I full screen this fucker? Why did the Japanese never let you full screen? So this is the house in Fata Morgana, a requiem of innocence. So this was actually sent to me by, of course, the developers. Um, well, Manga Gamer sent this to me. And I have no idea about it. I do want to go full screen. I can do full screen. Yay! Can't be worse than furries. Move the cursor to the bottom corner of the screen to display the in-game menu. Okay. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit felleth. Hide not the fe- Fine, bye. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou- Okay. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And for bye. For I am thy servant, that goes like a motherfucker. Oh, Psalm... Yeah, I don't know shit about the Bible. This is, I think, the first official Japanese game we've done. Cheers! A saint's blood and good fortune to all! Oh my god! I... Um, holy shit <laughs> is right. This is on Steam. Voices, so many voices. Laughing, laughing, laughing. Oh my god, I don't know what's gonna happen. If this gets any worse, we will turn this off, don't worry. Was this the 10th such party or the 20th? I no longer had any idea. The Lord's guest merrily drank of my blood. My father had not blessed me with his miracle, so wealthy nobles could fill their goblets with it. Oh God, we might get banned. This got dark quick. My blood was for the poor, for the infirm and destitute. Hey guys, you know how a lot of you guys actually ask? Uh, why I don't do Japanese games, like Japanese visual novels. There you go. Oh fuck it, we're already starting this shit out. Why am I here? Why am I not die doing my father's work? <laughs> Should we turn this off? I can't help it if these are being sent to me. With each passing moment, my body grew colder and colder. While a mad, fiery fervor spread among the partygoers. This is why we don't keep Japanese. I like that everyone's like, this is terrible! It's safe, no nudity. Thank you, spaghetti. We can do murder. Father, it hurts. My soul hurt far more than my body. It felt like it was cracked in a dozen places, about to shatter. Again and again, I told myself it was just a trial, 
that God was simply testing me, but I didn't think I could bear it much longer. A horrible black miasma spilled what the fuck was that from the wounds of my flesh filling the room. It was probably an illusion, something only I could see. What the fuck is that? The miasma soon began to consume, consuming my spirit. What? All of my life I spent telling myself to be pure, just, righteous, and all of that was corroded away, ripping me asunder. Father, Lord, of thy mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. I am thy servant. Please, O Father, deliver unto these sinners thy holy judgment. Cast them down into the depths of hell. Alrighty then! <laughs> I think I've ruined someone. There is an adult visual novel from Japan I've wanted to do, but I've not been able to find it digitally. For the sins they would commit against my faithful servants, disguised as a prayer, I curse them. For the first time in my life, I wished someone ill. I did what a saint, what the daughter of God, must never do. And in the moment, I committed a sin greater than anyone else in that room. I don't know what the fuck's going on. The girl, look at her face! I began to hear panicked voices rising up around the hall. However, I was completely oblivious to the cause of the unrest. In fact, I assumed that perhaps God had heard my wish and struck down some of the partygoers. The Lord marched over to where I sat in chains, grabbing me by the hair and yanking my head up. In his other hand, he held a sword. A disgusted grimace was covered, was carved into his face as though he was looking down at the filthiest thing in the world. I think we scared people off. You're a damned w Fine, you know what voice it's getting. You're a damned witch wearing a saint's skin. <laughs> Hammock doesn't want to talk anymore. Oh my god, this looks like the art from one of the Castlevania games. I wonder if it's the same artist. This is worse than I expected. The stench of rotting flesh hung in the air. Corpses were strewn about the room in varying states of decay. Blood pooled on the floor, black and thick as mud. An eyeball hung loosely from one body, half decomposed and about as much as a liquid as it was a solid. On many white bone was in, was visible. Me, on many white bone was visible through patches of flesh that had rotted away entirely. Some had been worked to death. Others died, uh, died of any number of diseases, and they were the lucky ones. <laughs> okay, God, is it the same artist? Can anyone actually look? Cause it does look like that art. Several bodies bore stab wounds from head to toe. Others looked like someone had tried to rip them in two. Some had been burned until their entire body shriveled. And some were covered in blisters. There was no shortage of people who had obliviously been tortured. Though the man on the other end of the torture, the Lord Varner, though of it is more of a leisurely activity. The Lord was spoken of in whispers as the second coming of the great tyrant of old. Though it wasn't until I snuck into his manor and saw it for myself, I truly understood how accurate that was. Artist me. Um... Spaghetti, can you see if that if that artist actually has done anything else? 
He was a damned psychopath. I apologize that I couldn't make it in time to save you all, too. I'm hardly a religious man, but for you, I think I can spare a prayer. Rest in peace. I'm not myself today. Though I suppose that shouldn't be a surprise, considering what today is. I wonder if that girl from the other day is among the dead. No, I need to stay focused. If this goes south, I'll be the one who's joining in in this pile. God, I'm starting to get a little nervous. Don't go weak in the knees now, Jacopo. Jacopo? Okay. How can I ever expect to go out? into the world if I can't even keep myself together from something this straightforward as this. Why, where must you? <laughs> I can do this, no problem. Let's start ourselves a revolt. I'm actually enjoying this. It all began a little over two weeks earlier. The local lord's iron-fisted rule was destroying the commoners. And this went doubly for, the, for those living in poverty who were barely scraping by before taxes. You could hardly take three steps out in the slums without hearing someone curse the lord. I have no idea who's first, who first proposed the plan. Everything came together so smoothly, so quickly, it's almost a blur. What started as the everyday litany of complaints hurled back and forth between the usual crew of young, indignant men in the pub soon escalated, ballooning into a full-fledged plot to strike back. He treats us like dog shit. We're the ones working for his goddamn land. Let's give the bastard what's coming. Over the next few days, word of the plot spread through the slums, and the number of volunteers grew to an impressive pace. And the more people we had on board, the more realistic it all started to become. While the original plan amounted to charging and headlong with whatever weapons we could scrounge together, it quickly evolved into a more sensible scheme to infiltrate the Lord's manor and free his slaves. It was no secret that the Lord was purchasing far more slaves than he should have any reason, reasonable use for. What we didn't know was what he did with the slaves, that the banquets he so loved to throw were actually six sadistic torture parties. The best we could do was infer their living conditions were less than ideal from the fact that the Lord kept acquiring more. And while the plan to free the Lord's slaves was undeniably rooted in a righteous desire, oh, thanks for stopping by. And while, okay, I would be lying if I said everyone's intentions were so pure. We wanted to do right, and we wanted to right an injustice, absolutely. But the prevailing desire was for vengeance. To give the Lord a little consequence, uh, com comeuppance. Part of it was also calculated that it would be advantageous for it to look like a slave revolt rather than a civilian uprising. If we struck from the outside, we were liable to bring the Lord's wrath down upon more than just the handful of us involved. But if the blow came from the inside, couldn't blame us. Secondly, the Lord's mansion sat atop a hill, which meant his soldiers had the advantage of terrain. It would be nigh impossible for a band of lowly, ill-equipped peasants to break through his defenses and we certainly didn't have the money to hire mercenaries. No amount of righteous anger was getting us anywhere near that manner. On the other hand, quietly getting one person inside to stir the pot was far more feasible. So ultimately, freeing the slaves was the means to an end. It was our best chance to deal with the Lord, to deal the Lord a real blow. 
Of course, that didn't mean we wouldn't save, save as many people as we could. Nor did it mean it would be easy to pull off, or that any of us would make it out alive. The plan went as follows. We would find a slave trader willing to sell one of, one of us to the Lord. Once they had infiltrated, they would spread the word of the scheme to the other slaves, trying to get as many of them on board as possible. Finding the slave trader willing to cooperate was surprisingly easy. Their businessmen and slaves are their products. While the majority didn't give a damn what happened to the slaves after they'd received payments, there were more than a few who were displeased knowing their precious wares were being squandered. Slaves were supposed to be long-term workers. They're not ne meant to be expendable. They require food and rest and some semblance of reasonable living conditions. It was far more glamorous life, obviously. It was far from a glamorous life, obviously, but most sensible slave owners at least had a vested interest in keeping their workers alive. <sighs> However, that was far from the case with Lord Barnier. Slaves were, of course, the property of whoever purchased them and mere slave traders had no place complaining about how they were being treated. That didn't mean the traders had to like it, though and there was a small collective of them who staunchly refused to do business with the Lord, quietly mocking anyone who did. Give me a second, guys. Hopefully that's a burp and not more throw up. Me. Sorry guys, just give me a minute. Nobody openly spoke ill of the Lord, let alone opposed him directly. Peers they helped with possibly are made several men. Not a karma. Not a karma engine. No, I've not heard of that one. <laughs> but did they help? Yeah, that's my question. Did they help with Castlevania? So they would help us get in and nothing more. But that was fine. That was all we needed from them to put our plan into action. And the vanguard of our operation, the one who, f who would infiltrate the Lord's Manor, was me. I volunteered for the position. Partially in the heat of the moment, but also because I was conflict was con confident I could pull it off. No, I'm okay now. Above all, though, I didn't want to believe that I couldn't manage such a straightforward task. I had to step up and take initiative, or I would never escape this life as a poor, lowly slum dweller. Crawling through the dirt, everyone, nobles, peasants, Nobles and peasants alike look down on me, thinking I'm worthless. That would be me for my whole life. My whole pathetic life. Like hell, I was going to let that happen. I wanted to claw my way up as high as I could manage. I didn't want to surrender to accept that I was powerless. I wanted to make something of my one and only life. We choose the beginning of the Lord's next banquet my infiltration, and that was when I saw the horror for myself, the abuse and the torture he put the slaves through. Yeah, it does look like sympathy in the sym symphony, I can't say that word, of the night. The abuse and the torture he put the slaves through was a goddamned blood banquet. Any mistake, no matter how small, would invite harsh discipline. Barnier was in a particularly foul mood that day. He would physically beat the wrongdoer. He had a particular fondness for activities that drew blood, though. And he would regularly gather together noble, nobles with similar predilections at his manor. 
Once the banquet had begun, it generally continued for two weeks. Jeez, that's a little too much torture even for me. The first thing I did after infiltrating was spread word of the plan to the other slaves. To be honest, I assumed it would be easy getting them to cooperate. They should have been re they should have revealed Barnier more than anyone after all. Reviled. But I couldn't have been more wrong. Every ounce of willpower had been drained from them. They were malnourished, unrested, and violently oppressed. I could hardly have convinced them to swat at a mosquito. He had them completely under his thumb. Everyone was utterly terrified to fight back against Barnier. Everyone, okay. There were, they would just as soon take their own lives. Hardly a day in, and the plan already seemed to have hit a wall. Welcome to Japanese visual novels, Tatsu. A full week I spent trying to, trying and failing to convince a single soul to assist in the revolt. Just as I was beginning to fear it might not work after all. We need to talk. Okay, god damn it, this is the artist behind. Uh, sympathy. We need to talk. Come with me. He was a tall, muscular slave who spent most of his time doing physical labor. Despite the poor conditions, he seemed to be keeping himself in rather good shape. And unlike the other slaves, his eyes were filled with fear and resignation. But it wasn't hope I saw in them either. Rather, they looked like the eyes of a bloodthirsty wolf and his unkept greasy blonde hair only served to amplify the primal impression he gave off. Between that and the faint cocky smirk visible on his lips, he more resembled the head of a gang of ruffians than a slave. I wasn't sure it was entirely wise to accompany him anywhere. But against my better judgment and with far too little information, I followed the man to the Great Hall. Inspired by the guy who... Might be. There were a dozen or so nobles and upperclassmen and women clustered about the hall. The air was filled with the scent of aromic, aromat, aromatic herbs, and it wasn't long before I realized they were meant to mask the smell of blood. A large table was lined with plates, stacked with piles of glistening dark red meat. Noblemen sneered at us with wet lips as we entered the room. The contrast between the nobles' practiced graceful mannerisms and their grotesque feast of which they were partaking was so bizarre I simply stood there aghast. There were no room for anger to form. The Lord stood on a platform a small stage at the far end of the room. Holy fucking bananas, he's insane. Are you the slave who offered to be the day's entertainment? The buff man nodded, dropping down to one knee. What does he mean by entertainment? To the artist. Her? No, no shit, it's a girl? Cool. Surely you tired of merely inflicting pain on helpless slaves? Would you by chance be interested in something a little more exciting? Could you be any more disrespectful? Lord Barnier, you would do best to rid yourself of a barbarian, a barbarian such as him. There, there, give the poor man a break. You can't expect an uneducated slave to be properly versed in the ways of polite society. Now elaborate, slave. Me and him? We do? Right here, right now? Huh? Do you sir? Do you seriously think we haven't already pit slaves against each other numerous times by now? If that's all... Tell me. Were they vigorous? Were they as vigorous as the two of us? 
young and chomping at the bit. Well, uh... If all you wanna see is a couple of half-dead slaves limping and flailing at each other, then help yourselves. But you're not gonna find many here what can give you a fight with some real oomph, you know? Oh, half the slaves here'd probably keel over but just a little shove. So I figured you might be up for a little change of pace. A barbarian like me? Whoa, 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 I never agreed to this. Suck it up, you slave. Since when have you had the right to agree to anything? You make a compelling argument, er, you make a compelling argument. Gratian, was it? Lord, you know my name, I'm on it. I will not get, he will not get a voice. Oh, I want, oh, I want Bloodstained Ritual of the Night so badly. Oh, that game looks so good, I want to try it so badly. Oh, I only remember it because you came very highly recommended. The slave trader said you were descended from the line of warriors that made a name for themselves fighting in the ancient Colosseums. I had assumed he was exaggerating. But perhaps there was some truth to it after all. Who can say? Couldn't you tell? Couldn't tell you about me ancestors. But what I can tell you is that I just love a good do. Oh, I haven't gotten to play the demo. Oh, damn you, Drago! I always I wanted to donate so badly, but the the channel wasn't good enough for it when that came out. Cause I wanted to get like the ring and everything. Fought in the Colosseum, descended from the gladiators, and I'm supposed to go one on one against him? Very well. Gods, bring these two swords. Sire. Shit. What is he hoping to accomplish? To win Barner's favor? I guess I'll just have to hope I can catch him by surprise as soon as... Hey, hey. Hey, kid. Listen up. What? Eyes forward. And keep it down. Listen carefully. Don't give any... Don't get any wise ideas, got it? Just go along with it. Everything's alright on the level. What are you scheming? You'll find out soon enough. Assume you can handle a sword anyhow. The two gods approached us, each carrying a long sword. Oh, I know, I know. Everything about Bloodstained I want to play. It just, it makes me happy. It makes me as happy in my pants as most of the games I show make Panda. It was heavier than I expected and it felt I felt it felt awkward in my hands. Both of our blades were badly chipped, clearly old and battle worn. Of course they wouldn't give a give new quality weapons to a pair of slaves, but a sword was still a sword. God, I wish I could have supported it. Beaten through they may have been, I still had to be careful, or I'd be dead before I ever got the slave revolt off the ground. That said, I had survived this long in the slums. I wasn't completely helpless, and I had experience with a dagger, though I wasn't sure how much help it would be now. The longer two-handed weapon still felt awkward in my hands. As I squinted at the blade's hilt, and adjusted my grip, trying to familiarize myself with the feel of it, Barner took a seat, readying himself to spectate. That's when I caught the sight of what lay hidden in the back of the stage. I stood there, staring at Gabe, completely forgetting I was but moments from a duel with a man twice my size. At the back of the stage was what looked like an altar, dripping in a thick draped in a thick white sheet and stained red. Atop it sat a young girl covered in gashes. Her head was drooped, but I couldn't see her so I couldn't see her face. But judging from her size, I didn't think she could be more than ten years of age. That seems so much fucking worse now. 
Some wounds were older and had already scabbed over. Some were swollen, bright red protrusions on our pale skin. Some were oozing pus, and others were so fresh they were still bleeding. It was difficult to find a part of her body that wasn't cut. Hey, what do you think you're doing to that girl? I don't care who you are, no one deserves that. Even as I shouted at the Lord, the girl remained motionless. She seemed unconscious. Not dead yet, but it wouldn't be too long. Silence, Kerr! I don't recall giving you permission to speak. Or if you'd rather lose your head right now, continue on as you are. Damn despot. Now go on, get started. Give us a show befitting of this grand affair. Fighting my urge to snap back at him, I turned to face the slave named Gratin. Gratin. The other guests lined the walls, whispering among themselves, speculating about the potential victory. The crowd was so overwhelmingly in Gratin's favor, to absolutely no surprise, they didn't even bother taking bets. Try not to go down in one blow, kid. Hold on, what's the point of this? Slowly, Grotnian lowered into a crouch, and the next second he leapt at me like a tiger. There was an audible whoosh, and before I even had time to gasp, he was mere inches away. What choice do I have? <laughs> I swung up my sword, catching Grotnian's blade mid-descent and attempting to pa a parry, but there was far more weight in his strike than I had expected. The impact caused my hands to sting painfully and my knees to buckle. I clenched my teeth, trying at the very least to hold my ground. Urgh! Gratins barely gave me the time to recover, let alone strike back, before launching into a second attack. His ha he handled the long sword with effortless. He's <laughs> he handled the long sword so effortlessly, swinging it through the air in such an impressive, perfect arc that I could hardly believe we were both using the same weapon. Huh! I twisted out of the way, but not quite in time. The tip of his blade skimmed the skin of my neck. And then, not even giving me a chance to catch my balance, he thrust his blade at me. While I managed to deflect the attack just in time, I wasn't able to follow through. Meanwhile, a wide mocking smirk, smirk, smirk spread across Rothian's face. Seem to be having the time of his life. Come on, kid. You're gonna have to do better than that if you want to keep your head. Ah. I rattled off several insults in my head. But unlike him, I couldn't spare the energy to put them into words. I've seen that, that special effect before. Pick it up, boy! Arr. God damn. That all you got, kid? I thought you'd fare a little better. Shut your damned mouth. I was struck up I was stuck on the defensive, and with every strike he pushed me farther and farther back. I was almost up against the wall. I thought he said it was part of some plan. Or was he just trying to get me to get let my guard down? He's conspiring with the Lord, he must be. Why challenge me to a duel though? Did someone spill the word of my plan to him? <laughs> come on, come on, give me your best shot, boy. Arr. Yeah, very funny. You know damn well I'm barely managing as it is. You gotta at least try. Don't want to put our audience to sleep now, do we? Mm. Even the bones of my forearms are starting to sting. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. Here, let me show you how it's done. God, I can't get a damn inch on him. Much more of this and I'll be up against the wall. I'm dead if I don't go on the offensive. 
That was my last chance. Well, I'm still got, well, I still got bre breathing room. Hey, big guy! You may think you have the advantage, but not for long. That's rich coming from a guy who can't even get one swing in on me. It was all a trick to get your guard down. I've been saving this one just for you, meathead. Good luck dodging it with that hulking body of yours. Now that's more like it. Let me have it, kid. I hopped backwards a couple of paces until my heel was pressed against the wall. There was no backing down, not anymore. Breathing heavily, I lifted my blade, pointing it at Gratian. He pointed his, his in turn, a cocky grin plastered on his face. And then, I kicked off the ground, hard. Sending me flying toward him, my sword held down near my waist, his above his head. And then, whoosh! He, wha he whiffed, his blade ripping through the air just above my head. The mere force of the gale created by his swing was so intense. For a brief moment, I thought he might have knocked my head clean off my shoulders. But I was still breathing. And despite the exhaustion, my mind was incredibly clear and focused. I hadn't swung up at him, but slid across the floor. Backs wide open. I lurched to my feet, spinning around, and swung my sword to at his neck with everything I had. Mm. Urgh. What? But my would-be grand comeback was deflected from behind without a bat of the eye. <laughs> and hardly a whimper deflect, deflect, deflected from that matter. My hands felt like they were on fire. Little bit on the dirty side, that was. But hey, not half bad, kid. Damn it. Just a little more oomph that, to that swing and you might have landed it. Too bad, too bad. I don't stand a chance against him head on. But he's not one to fall for the same trick twice. I need a new plan. Back against the wall with you. Son of a... Ah! What's the matter, kid? That all you got? After all that talk, I was expecting a little more from you. Ah! He's not... He's got me completely under his thumb. I'm dead if I don't do something, but I can barely lift my arms anymore. It's getting harder to breathe. My vision's going blurry. I can't. I can't die yet. Not here, not now, and not to this damn brute. That's not... That has to be something. An opening I'm not seeing. Alright guys, I hate to be a cock tease, but if you guys enjoyed this, we may have to do this again. I'm afraid I'm going to have to get going and walk the little pupper duppers. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I may very well be... What did I do? What did I do? Guys, I don't know what I did! Oh, I know what I did. So if you guys enjoyed this, I may very well be back for that game another time. It is a really good game, guys, if you want. It's called The House in Fataga Morgana. So we'll be seeing this again soon. So, bye, everyone. Don't forget to give some love to the new videos up on YouTube and all that jazz. Bye.